Hey, what's going on, guys? So today we're talking about another episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. Um, two holidays in a row on a Sunday. Two two weeks in a row of a holiday is always fun. Um, I know, like, New Year's Day is not that big of a holiday compared to Christmas, but still. Um, so I was spending time doing that. I also, like, after taking 10 days off, I wasn't, like, super excited to just turn around and do another Penny Stock Market Watch four days later. Um, but... After this, we probably, I am going to definitely try to get back to that um, every Sunday type scenario. Um, we might end up on page three on Sunday, but we'll have to wait and see. Because um, there wasn't a lot of changes like Ian Shuffle, Ash Blossom, and Joy Springs. Something interesting though is Sword Soul. Um, there was definitely, you know, something I need to see. Like when it comes to buying deck cores, I've mentioned this before, I just wanted to mention it again. Um, I always get deck cores on eBay. Um, you know, I, I've, I have the video already on my channel. You guys can go ahead and check that out if you'd like to. It's just me ranting um, about the practices on TCG Player. About how, like, I should have, like, a full Battle Wasp engine that just never came in the mail. And, it, it, yes, you can sometimes get full deck cores from one person and get that package in. But a lot of times you get it from here, 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 here. You got five different sellers. One of them forgets to send it or just doesn't. And all of a sudden, you're SOL. That's why I like going to eBay and just getting a full deck core. Um, and especially now that eBay has, I, I you know, eBay has access to um, TCG Player in the form of, like, it bought it. Um you know, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Um, but taking a look at this, you know, you get DD Crows. I don't know what version of DD Crows. Probably just a dollar, though. I don't know what this card is. Uh, common Artifact Scythe. Nibiru's cool. I don't know how much Nibiru is. I haven't seen Nib on the Penny Stark Market Watch in a while. It's not that great of a card right now, though. Probably that version for $2, I would assume. Um, most of these super cheap deck cores have the cheapest version possible uh, but gold regeki isn't too cheap um one emergence feels kind of bad what is this free range monster during the main phase immediately after this effect resolves normal summon a monster or you can set one so that's fun uh, a good extra deck no baron what is this card gyre more dragon show uh, these tokens are not worth anything. Um, but, like, if you bid 30 bucks, obviously you got to pay for shipping and handling. Um, oh, it's only got 17 minutes left, too. Oh, okay, so maybe not this one specifically. It might actually just not get bid on, and it might come up. I also might bid on it, too. Uh, because Sword Souls is this interesting deck of, like, it's good but not great and might be able to get you, you know, your invite. And it's really not, like super complicated but it has a lot of like different routes you can take because of like um the synchro package you can do so many different uh synchro type things um with that let's go with this um what i what i've been liking to do lately i was just talking about this deck b troopers hey what's about this is actually fine this is good for ten dollars i mean and they look disgusting because it's low rarity, but it's cool. No, B Troopers is a fun deck, too. I mean, it's missing a lot. It's just the B Trooper stuff, but it's the core, right? Um, but what I've been doing a lot, and I just kind of mentioned it with the Sword Soul deck, um, is recently I've been doing Yu-Gi-Oh! decks on auction, right? Um, this is not that bad of a value. Um, I mean, obviously with auction, you're playing the game. Of like, um, this is no way this gets sold for 70 bucks. Tons of value. Um, no offense to this person, but that's not getting sold for 70 bucks. Um, you run the risk of like, okay, I can get five and bid five bucks for a virtual world core, right? And then you, you know, your opponent just beats, barely beats you. So you barely beat them, barely back and forth, back and forth until you get to a spot to where you actually spent more, especially when we consider shipping. Um, then you would have just want to bought the deck core outright. But it's just something to keep in mind. We're doing everything we can here at the Penny Stock Market Watch to save. That's what we do. Uh, but sometimes just buying full deck cores off of auction can do that. I think uh, it was a dinosaur deck core. It's worth about 70 bucks. That sold for about uh, 48 or 50 something. Um, I lost out on that because um, I was paying attention. It sniped me right at the end. 
Um, but just something to keep in mind. Um, this is another card I've, I've mentioned before. I feel like it's hit its valley. Um, the market price is a dollar. Um, it got down to a dollar fifty, dollar fifty-eight, um, and now it's sort of climbing back up. I mean, there's still two dollars sixty-nine of them at two dollars. That's a lot. Um, but we look over here too. Um, Vion, malicious, like it feels like. And Heroes has been at this spot basically since the Hero Strike structure deck from like ten years ago. Yeah, it's really been ten years. Wow. Um, since that structure deck came out, but since the Hero Strike structure deck came out, Heroes have kind of felt like either borderline tier two or rogue. Um, and you know, one really good wave of support. They're a very good deck, and Fusion Destiny is, and even all versions of Fusion Destiny are like at least five bucks right now. Could a new wave of support potentially power creep Fusion Destiny for sure? But Fusion Destiny is a really good card. You know, you, you double foolish, um, the restriction is nothing uh, to hero players, and you get out a free, you know, Fusion Monster. It's, it's a really, really good card, um, especially for, um, for hero players. F zero Draco future. And so this did just recently dip under five dollars. That's how it ended up on here. Always love when cards like that happen. Like cards that have absolutely no business being on this market watch ended up there. But this card just who's running it? You know what I mean? Like where do you play it? I don't know. We could take a look at other versions too. I'm pretty sure there's just two versions, right? Like. Is the King's Court version really selling for, like, jeez. Is it a rare? That's an ultra rare. Oh, it's a secret. It's a rarity bump. I mean, King's Court feels like it has the potential in, like, five years to be a randomly really good set. You know how, like, sets randomly do that? Like, sets that, like, ah, oh, I remember that set. Nobody liked that set. Everybody thought that set was trash. And then all of a sudden, it just becomes, like, it's really the booster box was 70s. Lightning Storms, Rivalries. I mean, there is potential for value here. Jokers. I forgot the Joker cards. They're, like, the um, Queen's Knight, Jack's Knight, those cards. It's not loading, and I think that's a sign. Um, but yeah, who's running this card? It's a good card. Once per turn, your opponent activates a monster effect. You get detachment shares and negate the activation. It's got three thousand attack. Um, three Z monsters with the same rate protect number monsters. You can also Z summon it with a number F zero utopic future. You control as material. Um, I wonder. There it is. Oh, this is. A nickel. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Okay. Um, is this probably the cheapest version? Yes. By a lot, actually. The Prismatic Seeker Rare only being $5 feels like it's not a penny stock. I thought, I thought, I figured it wasn't a penny stock. Because this is a decent card. And this is a decent little package. Um, but who's, I don't know. I don't, I don't think anybody's running those cards. Uh, you guys can let me know in the comments down below if your deck is playing those cards. I haven't seen that card in a minute, though. Uh, Bolt of Skill Drains, like I mentioned before. I think we are going to go to page 2. I don't think we're going to jump all the way to page 3, though. We'll save page 3 and page 4. We'll, we'll go to the elusive page 4 on Sunday. So make sure you guys subscribe for that. But um, It's just... We talked about this a little bit last week. Um, this this deck is why we don't see fluctuations in the market because things that cause the fluctuations in the market is like, oh, this deck is meta now. This deck is meta now. This deck is meta now. This is a really cool tech card. This is, there isn't any tool tech cards. Like I know I was I was just looking at tier element deck lists um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I saw three different deck lists. One was 40, one was 40, one was 41. The two that were 40 had the exact same main deck. And the one that was 41 had two cards that were swapped out and then obviously had a third card. So that's why we don't see too many fluctuations. Um, Security Dragon's interesting. Is this the only version of Security Dragon? Interesting. This is not... What's going on here? 
controls it. Dual power? It's an interesting card. It says once per turn, once if you've played Duel Links, you know this card. Um, but uh, once per turn, once face up on the field, if this card is co linked, and its arrows point up and down, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. But you can target one monster your opponent controls, return it to the hand. So the targeting is not the greatest, but returning it to the hand is really solid. Um, so it could be a cool one of. Um, I don't think it's going to get like super expensive, but it could randomly have something that's niche in it. Um, Branded Banishment, shout out to this card. Um, let's take a look. Is it just two still? The thing is, stun is so bad. But they did just talk about that new spell card. I don't know if you guys saw that. The uh, double summon pot of greed. But you can't run this card. Wait. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the card that I was talking about doesn't look like that good. But um, my first thought was, oh, stun could run that card. But not if they're... They can't run this card and that card. Um, because this activates in the monster, or this activates in the hand, and it's a monster effect. Um, I mean, there's a lot of one ofs, right? So, I mean, this is 28 at 249. Um, this was 250, and now we're already at three. It's not out of the realm of possibility, especially with this being the prismatic secret rare version. Um, which is kind of an upgrade. But I would assume the Secret Rare from Burst of Destiny is always going to be the more expensive version. Um, but if we look at this card, um, both of them are penny stocks too. Um, you know, six months ago it was $25. Right? So this idea of, I mean, it's like 30 35 bucks, Could it get to at least $10? Right, um, we'll leave this one alone because it's not really a penny stock. But could this version get to five dollars? Right, so did this just change? Oh, I'm on page four. I was like, <laughs> this wasn't that good. But um, if we go to the cheapest one that has multiples, right? So we go 211 at nine, right? Um, though the seller's offline, you ain't see it. Uh, <laughs> um, if we go the 250 at 28, or we'll just go 20 of them, right? So we buy 20 of them because the math is easier for 50 bucks, right? And then it hits five dollars. That's a hundred. So now, uh, yeah, because it's at 250, so it'd be doubling. Mm -hmm. So I mean, literally, we make double our money if this card hits five dollars. Do we see it getting a reprint anytime soon? It might randomly. I think like Trap Tricks is getting a structure deck, right? It could be in that. Be on the lookout for that. That's I don't know anything, but it feels like it could be somewhere. But if it doesn't get like a random reprint, I could easily see this card being five dollars within the year. Um, as I try to scroll all the way back, um, like I always say though, I try to mention this every video because it's literally the best advice I could possibly give to somebody, and it's literally why. This type of advice is on my main um, channel. Or it's, it's, it's like the video that everybody sees when they come to my channel. It's just like nobody knows what a uh, stock is going to do. Nobody knows what a Yu-Gi-Oh card is going to do. So, you know, if you want to go and spend 50 bucks of your money on this card, on the off chance that it turns into $5, you can do that. If you want to avoid it, um, and not spend $50 on the off chance that it goes to 50 cents. You can do that too. Spend your money how you feel because it's your money, right? Um, don't listen to, I think I saw like DB grinder, MST.TV, obviously like MCO 40, um, you know, house of champs. Like they do, there's a lot of people that do these type of things and they'll say, Oh, this card, it's going to go to the moon. You got to get your copies. They don't have any idea. They don't have any idea, all right? They know just as well as you do, as I do. Um, I feel like I know a lot. I've been doing this market watch for probably, a, you know, close to a full year now. However long it's been, I don't know. It's all blur. But um, I know how the market moves, but it doesn't mean that my word is law. I've been right. I've been wrong, you know? Um, for example, um, if we go back to the first page here, um... I've mentioned 
I haven't really mentioned any of these cards. Um, well, you know, the best cards, you know, they would be, they would be, you know, above the penny stock market watch. Um, and, um, I've mentioned some of these cards before, you know, there's been some great cards. There, there have been very, f you know, I like to think few bad cards. Um, and there's cards that go up, down, left, right, all around. Um, so spend your money how you feel. I'm just trying to spotlight cards that I think could be interesting, like this one. Fractal is three dollars. Why is Fractal three dollars? <laughs> you know, every year a new deck gets put in that category of like nostalgic, right? Like Insector, Infernity, Xaver, Spellbooks, um, Heroes, uh, Shadals, Ritual Beast, Satellar Knights. Um, Monarchs, Cosmos, um, Zodiac, to an extent, that's that kind of still good right now, uh, True Draco, um, Spirals, uh, Orcus, An Emancipator, Thunder Dragon, without Colossus, because R.A.P. Colossus, um, Salomon Great, um, Eldlich, is kind of in that category now. Burning Abyss, Altergeist, um, Tri-Brigade. You know, a deck that was really good, and it still can actually do some things. Every deck I just mentioned, to an extent, um, is still interesting, um, especially the more recent decks like Tri-Brigade. Um, so I have a Tri-Brigade core already, because when I... When I saw these reprints coming out, um, and this deck got super cheap, so this was this was a good example of a card I said of a deck I said to invest in um, that actually ended up working out because it's just it is it's, it's a very strong strategy. It does randomly work with Sprite, uh, Bird Up randomly did well. So is it as good as it used to be? Obviously not. But what's great is this Beast Beast Warrior Wing Beast. There are. So so many so many archetypes that are that are you know aligned with that there's so many archetypes that can abuse the tri brigade archetype i mean he was even running i was even running like crystal beasts tri brigade at one point i was trying to figure that out it doesn't work that well um, that's why you never saw a deck profile i don't the reason i stopped doing deck profiles is i really stopped going to locals because i don't like the format um and I don't really love people. If you guys want, I can just start doing deck profiles regardless of testing. Um, because some people do do that. And I, I'm watching the videos like, really? You're running that card? Um, if you guys want, I can do that. Because I have a lot of decks that I like think are amazing, even though I don't really test them. And I obviously do test them, but I don't test them as extensively as like going to regionals or YCS, etc. Because um, like I said, I hate the format. But um, if you guys want me to do that type of thing, I definitely can. Um, but the final card I wanted to talk about, um, branded, um, I think Lithium just did a video on the branded archetype. Okay, that's, where none of this is right. Okay, there we go, there we go. We're so close yet so far. Okay, branded cards. Because I saw branded opening. I think branded opening was like top five. Branded banishment, branded in red, branded in high spirits. Like, look at these cards. There's insane value, and this is how we'll end. You know, we were already here once, and we'll come here again. Oh, I still have a lot of these cards from the structure deck. I would, by the way, I would 100% get those structure decks. Just letting you know. 100%. Structure decks have consistently been. Like, there's one that says Saga with Eyes of Blue from, like, 15 years ago or so. The Blue Eyes structure deck that came out a long, long time ago, like, introduced Maiden. Um, that one's not that good, but most structure decks maintain their value and gain. Like, most structure decks are, like, compound interest. Like, it's just, it's going to happen. And we take a look at this branded Despia deck. Um, not the best, but not the worst. And, okay, did tier elements completely power creep this deck? Yes. Um, but could it could potentially be in that category we were literally just talking about when we were talking about Tri-Brigade? I think so. Right? And, you know, $15 for this deck core, you get three copies of the structure deck, and you can kind of mess around with a deck that is a lot of fun. 
Um, brand, you know, there's, you know, if you've played Master Duel, you know, like, this deck is, it's, it's got some plays, you know, and, and Tragedy's cool, and this card, you know, Dramatur, Dr Dramatic Turge of Despia, it's a cool card, there's a lot of cool, Mirror Jade's still a really good card, and, um, actually, if we go back real quick, this is really the only card that you probably need that is not really a penny stock and might kind of push up the value, um, especially because tier elements, some tier elements lists are running this card. But if you look, since tier elements of Shizu has been a thing, this card has not been that high in value. It's only 30 bucks. Probably get a reprint sometime soon. Um, you can get Japanese versions that you can't play for $20. Um, like I said, you can't play um, OCG cards because I think they're bigger. Or they're smaller. Ah, one of the two. Um, but let me know what you guys think. We're not ending on a penny stock. One second. Before I do the close. Okay, go to Brandon Red. Let me know what you guys think in those comments down below. What are cards under $5 or less that you were looking for? Make sure you guys click that like button and show your support for the channel. Subscribe for even more content. But most importantly of all, have a good day.